In this video, we will study the probability that the number of correct answers is at least 7 in a true-false test composed of 10 questions. So we have the following issue. A true-false test consists of 10 questions. What is the number of all possible outcomes or the number of elements in the sample space? So any element in the sample space is an ordered sequence of correct and not correct. So the question will be marked C as correct or N as not correct. And this sequence is composed of 10 objects such as this sequence here. This sequence here can be generated out of this set which contains only two objects C and N. So to know the number of elements in the sample space we can apply the multiplication principle for 10 disjoint sets and in order. So after answering all the questions any question can be either correct or not correct. So it is as if we are withdrawing C or N for the first question, C and N for the second question, and so on. So there is two ways for each question to come out as correct or not correct. And the number of ways that all these 10 questions may come out as correct or not correct is the multiplication of all these ways, and that is 1024 ways and these are the number of ways this true false test can be answered it can be answered in 1024 ways there is another way according to which we can find the number of ways to answer this test and that is by looking at the sequence of correct and not correct answer. We can see in this sequence that correct can be repeated more than once and not correct can be repeated more than once so that means replacement is allowed. And the other thing is if we change the order of answering we are going to change the result of the test so that means order is important. So in this case we have two conditions, replacement is allowed, order is important and we can apply the formula of permutation with replacement for n objects taken r at a time. So n is the number of objects in the set which is 2, so we have either c or n and r is the number of objects in the generated sequence and that we have 10 objects or r is the sampling size which is also 10 and we apply the formula by substituting n with 2 and r with 10 and we get 2 to the power of 10 and that is 1024 so we have 1024 ways of answering this test and that is the sample space. Question number two. If the student guesses at each answer, finds the probability that the number of correct answers is at least seven. So let's have a look at the possible answers. We may answer 10 correctly, 9 correctly, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one correctly or zero correctly. So the question demands that we answer at least seven questions correctly. So we may answer these questions, seven of them correctly or more. We may answer eight, nine or ten correctly. So these events are disjoint events and their union is the event answering at least seven questions correctly. And now let us permute each event to get the number of elements belonging to it. So for this event here, 
which is answering exactly seven correct answers so we have the permutation of ten objects with seven and three identical items we apply the formula and that is 120 elements and for the event answering eight questions correctly we have 10 objects with eight and two identical items so we apply the permutation formula and we get 45 elements of possible permutation of this event and for the event answering nine questions correctly we apply also the permutation formula and we get 10 elements and as for the event answering 10 questions correctly of course we have only one permutation or one possible outcome and now we can apply the probability formula knowing that all these events are disjoint events so the probability of at least seven question answered correctly is the sum of probability of each individual event so we add these probabilities together 1 over 1024 plus 10 over 1024 and so on and we get 11 over 64 and that is equal to 0.17 which means that if we apply for this test around 100 times we have around 17 chances to pass this test with at least 7 correct answers